Greetings, mother factors, and welcome to this week's feudal edition of 101 Facts. My name is Sam, or should I say Samurai? No, I shouldn't, because it's Samuel, really. And here I am with a shiny new avatar. Ooh, pretty neat, huh? It's either this or my real face. But this seems more fitting, because today we're dipping into one of 2020's most beloved video games, Ghost of Tsushima. It's a bloody battle to the death for the samurai against the Mongols, and we're here to cover it all. But how did fans of the game help fix a real-life problem in Tsushima? How much of it is really historically accurate? And is it just me or do grappling hooks improve literally every single game they're in? <laughs> Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered, so prepare for some stunning scenery to be covered in bits of carved up wrong'uns as we go through 101 facts about Ghost of Tsushima. Number one. This is not a Japanese version of Casper the Friendly Dead Lad. Ghost of Tsushima is a 2020 action-adventure video game developed by Sucker Punch Productions and published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. Boom, baby. Number two. Ghost of Tsushima was originally set to release on June the 26th, 2020. However, this was pushed to July 17th, 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The game went gold on June the 22nd, 2020. Going gold, by the way, means that it was all done and completed and sorted. Number 30. No. Number 3. In this open-world game, the player controls Jin Sakai, a samurai on a quest to protect Tsushima Island during the first Mongol invasion of Japan. It's an action-adventure with stealth elements played from a third-person perspective. There's the big sell. Number 4. The game is set on Tsushima Island, which is real by the way, in the late 13th century, which was also real. It features diverse regions like countrysides, fields, Shinto shrines, forests, villages, farms, mountainscapes, and various beautiful landmarks. No Norwich though, is it? Number 5. Ghost of Tsushima was initially revealed at Paris Games Week on October the 30th of 2017, but gameplay wouldn't be unveiled by Sucker Punch until the following year at E3 2018. Ah, uh, remember E3? Remember other people? Number 6. But who the hell are Sucker Punch Productions? I definitely hear you grumble. Well, they are an American video game developer, come on, that wasn't hard, made up of 160 employees creating such franchises like Sly Cooper and Infamous. Number 7. After the release of Infamous Second Son in 2014, SPP started having a big old think on what their next game should be. For instance, they had an idea for a dark steampunk medieval fantasy called Prophecy. A demo of Prophecy even leaked in 2020, five years after it was created. Number 8. Game director Nate Fox said that whatever this project was going to be for Sucker Punch, it was always going to be an open world. This is because he says that open worlds give power to the player and he considers it integral to modern gaming. Number 9. Co-founder of Sucker Punch Productions, Brian Fleming, said that they definitely want an open world game with melee combat, and art director Jason Connell even said they came up with 70 ideas, including games based around pirates or the Three Musketeers. Number 10. They even considered creating a game all about Rob Roy. Rob Roy is a Scottish outlaw folk hero akin to Robin Hood in the 17th century, except unlike Robin Hood, he actually existed. They obviously didn't make this game, because we would be talking about that instead, but that would have been cool, huh? Number 11. The team kept coming away from the seas, or musketeers, or steampunk, or Scotland, and back to the idea of feudal Japan, though. Later, they discovered a historical account of the Mongol invasion of Tsushima in 1274, and to quote them, the entire vision clicked into place. Number 12. Fleming stated that the motto and line they constantly went back to when creating the game was that a lone samurai survives the Mongol invasion of Tsushima and is forced to reinvent himself to save his island home. Yep, that pretty much sums up the game. Well done for sticking to your guns, pals. Number 13. This was done to give the story of the game an internal and external conflict. Externally, it was those Mongol guys wrecking the place, but internally, Jin had to wrestle with his honour and tradition instilled within him to save everybody. It's heavy stuff. Number 14. Jin was quite a difficult character for the creators of the game to write and animate, though, because they had to juggle him being stoic and non-expressive to be a hero similar to the protagonist of old samurai movies, but he also had to be hashtag relatable. Wow. At least he's not silent, eh, because he could have been. Number 15. This game looks and feels radically different to the other ones in Sucker Punch's repertoire. Sly Cooper, for instance, is a literal cartoon, while Infamous was very heightened and punky and based on the city the company's based in. Having to transition away from that was very difficult for the art department at first. Number 16. Now this could be why the game had a significantly longer production period than other Sucker Punch titles, with development lasting about six years. Well, six years spelt... what? Number 17. The team toyed around with other titles, but Ghost of Tsushima was the first choice every time. They did worry about Western people pronouncing it incorrectly and briefly considered just Ghost, but then thought that the audiences would just have to bloody deal with it. 
Number 18. But I hear more what? Staying true to its samurai stylings, Ghost of Tsushima has full voice acting in either Japanese or English, and a variety of side options for subtitles. Sucker Punch recorded the English part, while SIE Japan recorded the, you guessed it, soundtrack. Oh, sorry, no, the Japanese voice acting. Number 19. The Japanese voice actor for Jin is a chap named Kazuya Nakai. He's most well known for voicing swordsman Roronoa Zoro in the One Piece anime series over 20 years, as well as Dante Masamune from the Sengoku Pasara video games and anime. I've definitely butchered some of those, sorry. And man girl. Number 20. The English voice actor for Jin is Daisuke Suji. He was born in Kuwait, but his parents and name are Japanese. You might recognise him from the Amazon series The Man in the High Castle, where he played the High Prince. Number 21. Lord Shimura is possibly named after Japanese actor Takashi Shimura, who appeared in 21 of 30 legendary Japanese director Akira Kurosawa's movies, which have very clearly influenced the game's style. Number 22. Ooh, ooh. Ooh. Lord Shimura as a character, though, is probably inspired by Goromune Shigehisa, a member of the real Tsushima So clan. He was awarded the title of Jito after ending a rebellion started by the Abiru clan. Number 23. If that sounds familiar to those who have already liberated Tsushima, that's because it's very similar to the in-game Yarakawa Rebellion, in which Lord Shimura ended a rebellion started by the Yarakawa clan and was awarded the title of Jito. Number 24. By the way, in case you played it before and thought the first duel was basically outrageously unfair, it's meant to be. At Castle Kaneda, you can't beat Khan, because it's engineered to be impossible for his health to drop below zero. Number 25. Sumali Montano voices Yuna in the English dub of the game. If her voice sounds familiar, Montano has been in lots of things as an actress and VO artist, like such projects as Zora Blackwood in The Outer Worlds, and Mary Kosan in Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Number 26. Similarly, the voice of archery fiend Sensei Ishikawa may sound familiar too. Francois Chow has appeared in Lost and Birds of Prey or The Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. Number 27. Some of the lucky folks at Sucker Punch's audio team were sent to Japan to record some authentic sounds, including bird songs. Fair play for authenticity there, but there was probably a cheaper option available, wasn't there? Like, you know, I don't know, a talented parrot or something? Number 28. According to Twinfinite, the in-game Tsushima Island spans a whopping 11.02 square miles. That's pretty big for a video game, but the real Tsushima is 273.6 square miles, so come on lads. Number 29. For the first couple of years of the game's development, the island was absolutely covered by forest. This looked really cool, but proved pretty difficult to navigate because you couldn't see anything on the horizon, so more fields were put in to alleviate the need for a mini-map on screen. Number 30. Apparently, Shadow of the Colossus was used as a big inspiration for the epic feeling of riding across wide open spaces, and that's according to art director Jason Newell, so you can take that to the bank. Number 31. By the way, if you fancy trying to find Tsushima Island in real life, it's between the Tsushima Strait, obviously, and the Korea Strait, approximately halfway between Kyushu and the Korean Peninsula. Your whelks. Number 32. Now obviously the aim was to never fully rebuild or recreate Tsushima Island fully, a point that the game's director Nate Fox was keen to emphasise. He said that while the team were trying to transport people to 1274 Japan, they're not trying to replicate the full island exactly and the game was inspired by history but grounded in reality. Number 33. They did it pretty successfully it seems, so much so that a historian named Professor Hongo stated in an interview that he would tell children studying history to play this game to get a feel of what that era was like. Professor, it's very violent, probably shouldn't be a go-to for kids. Number 34. Another source of praise came from Toshihiro Nagoshi of the Yakuza franchise, who praised the research put into the game despite it not being 100% accurate historically. He also said it should have been made by a Japanese studio, but look, praise is praise. Number 35. In fact, he also said that the team were tempted to include real-life historical figures in the game Assassin's Creed style, but when they asked people who were more informed about the culture, they said it could be seen as insensitive to some, so they went with entirely fictional folk instead. Number 36. In response to the popularity of the game, Nagasaki's tourism website has extensive reference to Ghost of Tsushima to encourage gamers to visit, even including an interactive map to show areas of the island that would be familiar with gamers. I want to go to there when the world is, you know, not this. Number 37. In September of 2020, a typhoon ravaged the island, damaging a Shinto Tori gate. A crowdfunding campaign was set up to try and fix it, with the aim of raising 5 million Japanese yen. Number 38. 
Enter Dem Gamers to the rescue, because PlayStation 4 fans pledged their money to try and repair this bit of history by raising over five times the stated goal, with a total of 27.1 million yen. Repairs will start later this year. Number 39. The game takes inspiration from Japanese cinema featuring samurai, most notably the aforementioned Akira Kurosawa films like Seven Samurai and Sanjuro. Number 40. In fact, there's a whole visual mode dedicated to this style named Samurai Cinematic Mode. This makes the visuals for the whole game a grainy black and white, with Japanese audio and English subtitles aligning it nicely with Kurosawa and similar directors' back catalogues. Number 41. While this mode was praised by fans of Japanese cinema, it did have a few drawbacks. For instance, the lips of the characters move in time with the English audio only, and there are a few missions where you have to find flowers of a specific colour, and some of the combat relies on you responding to different coloured prompts, so I guess that makes it Dark Soulsy, I guess, in terms of difficulty? The meaning of life. Something that Dark Souls has that Ghost actually doesn't, a lock-on. You can't traditionally lock on to a single enemy at a time, and apparently this was something that the studio had a big debate on whether or not to include, the argument being it would show the samurai's precision and focus. Number 43. The game also contains a method of doing standoffs, which rely on your quick wits and steel nerves while waiting for the enemy to attack. This stillness is entirely deliberate and is once again a tribute to the samurai movies of old, which have samurai standoffs very similar to this. Number 44. Fox has called the game a cheeseburger samurai, which sounds delicious, although it would cut your throat open on the way down, but what did he mean by that? Well, it's in comparison to the term spaghetti western, i.e. westerns not made in America that are a love letter to the genre. In this way, this is an American studio tackling the samurai genre in that same loving way. Number 45. The game's director Nate Fox stated that while he was working on Sly Cooper, you know, that game about the raccoon who steals stuff that isn't one of the Guardians of the Galaxy, he was reading a manga called Asagi Yojimbo. In this comic, the main character is a quiet samurai who solves his problems in towns he arrives in using only his sword. Hmm, I wonder if that would go on to influence his later work. Number 46. Asagi Yojimbo, by the way, was created by a chap named Stan Sakai. Sounds familiar. Hmm. Yeah, his name was then used for Jin's surname and tribute, in case you didn't catch that. Number 47. There was another source of inspiration too that you may not expect. Red Dead Redemption. Fox said that the way Red Dead Redemption brought the fancy of being a cowboy in its fully living, breathing world that you can interact with was key to how he wanted players to feel in the world of Tsushima, except with less guns, probably. Well, definitely, actually. Number 48. Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild was also mentioned by Fox as inspiring too, because while making Tsushima, it got the team stoked, that's in quotes, to go deeper in terms of what makes the world of Tsushima more explorable and how to get the player curious. Number 49. So as a game where you play as a samurai, your sharp-bladed friend is what helps you best. Y your sword, I mean. The team had to make sure it was authentic, so they consulted a historical sword-fighting expert named David Ishimaru, I mean, that's a cool job, wow, to help create a reality-grounded combat system. Number 50. In 2018, Sucker Punch even invited two real-life modern samurais into the studio too. What they did with them isn't really very clear, all we know is this tweet really, but hey, they are dedicated. Number 51. They apparently did do some motion capture with real modern samurais at some point, so it could be these guys, but here's the thing, it was too fast. Way too fast. In fact, they actually had to ask them to do their moves slower so they could actually capture them using the technology. Number 52. So yes, the people in the game are entirely fictional, but the Sakai samurai clan did actually exist, though it wasn't established until the 14th century, over a hundred years after the events of the game. Number 53. The These People Aren't Real theme also extends to the main antagonist of the game, Koten Khan. Khan is of course meant to be a relative of Genghis Khan, who very, very, very much did exist. The actual Khan who helped to invade Tsushima was Kubla Khan. Number 54. So yes, Lord Shimura wasn't real, but Tsukakuni so was, and he was the one leading Tsushima at the time, with 80 samurai to fight the invasion. He died fighting the Mongols. Number 55. Because in reality, the Mongols weren't repelled by just one bloke, obviously. What is this, a video game? It was actually hurricanes that really got in their way, but that was later, after Tsushima had been successfully conquered by them. Number 56. Nate Fox stated that this is the reason why a lot of Jin is win-related. In the game, he follows the wind instead of waypoints, and his sword is engraved with wind and storm embellishments. Number 57. Fun extra fact for you here, those hurricanes and typhoons that stopped the Mongols, because yes, they stopped them a second time when they had another go, was thought to be the work of the thunder god Raijin, and so were called Divine Wind, which in Japanese is Kamikaze, and is the earliest known usage of that word. Number 58. 
From a gameplay point of view, the wind system is used instead of waypoints for a merge to them to make the character concentrate on their surroundings more. Fox said that if there was just a waypoint in the distance, with a countdown telling players how far away they were, they would just focus on that and look at nothing else around them. Number 59. Obviously the game is about 13th century samurai, so armour and swords and katanas are the name of the game, well they are in that world. But in the real world, 13th century samurais didn't wear armour like this or even use swords that often. They mainly use bows. Everything you knew was a lie. Number 60. Despite the blade being called a katana in the game, the blade that's known as a katana actually didn't exist during the Mongol invasion of 1274. Wow, how did they even win against the- oh, that's right, they didn't. Number 61. In fact, the word katana didn't exist in the context of battle until the Sengoku period, which started in 1467. Number 62. Instead, during the Mongol invasion, the sword the samurai used, when they weren't using bows, remember, was called the Tachi, which was forged as early as 900 CE. In the Japanese localization of the game, the blade is correctly referred to as the Tachi instead of katana for authenticity. Number 63. Actually, when Jin or any of the other characters use the bow, you'll notice that they first move the bow over their head before moving it down to extend. This is the traditional way of drawing a bow and had to be corrected during mocap sessions by a team member well versed in archery. Nintendo 64. A lot of Jin's arsenal, like the smoke bombs, sticky bombs and firecrackers are, are not all very historically accurate either, but maybe not as inaccurate as you may think. Samurai historian Paul O'Brien stated that gunpowder, which is kind of essential to those weapons, wasn't introduced to Japan by 1281, and that was by the Mongols. Number 65. In fact, Professor Hongo, who we mentioned earlier, even stated that gunpowder is a key theory as to why the Mongols even rocked up to Japan in the first place in real life. It was for the sulfur that Japan were mining extensively, which the Mongols wanted to use for their gunpowder. See, look, you're learning a lot more than you thought you were gonna today, didn't you? Hmm? Hmm. Number 66. If you're thinking that a lot of Jin's stealthy so-called ghost moves are very reminiscent of ninjas and wondering why he's never referred to as one, well, here's something for you. Ninjas weren't a thing until the 15th century, so hey, maybe Jin inspired them in this universe. Number 67. Sometimes you'll strike an enemy down and they won't die right away, just like in real life, at which point you can end their suffering for some sweet, sweet resolve. You know, the little yellow orbs. This is seen as honourable in the game and would have been in real life too. Samurai would not leave an enemy to die of gangrene infection slowly. They would put them out their misery quickly. Number 68. Also, samurai did used to have to take the heads of enemies for proof that they'd done something about the problem they'd been asked to solve. Obviously Jin very rarely, if ever, does this in the game. You know, just a thought for the sequel. Number 69. Take the head. Speaking of realism, throughout the game, Jin composes haikus along his journey in exchange for headbands. I'm still not sure how that works, but anyway. However, haikus, as we know them now, didn't actually exist until the 1600s. He may as well have done a gangster rap for how historically accurate it was. Number 70. In the Japanese version of the game, these are not haikus at all, but rather what's known as waka, which are longer forms of poetry, and is seen as more historically correct. Number 71. Also in the Japanese version of the game, there are small contextual clues about certain characters based on their dialogue. As an example, Yuna calls Jin, well, Jin, and doesn't give him any other honourable title, which denotes that her character is dismissive of usual tradition and customs. Number 72. Something else the Westerners may need context for, Misako gives her banished lover a comb. Now that doesn't sound too terrible, heck it even sounds nice, but this is actually taboo because a comb is known in Japanese as a kushi. Now ku means suffering and she means death, so not exactly a great omen there. Number 73. Alongside the main quests and even side quests, there are what's called the mythic quests, which were inspired by real Japanese folklore that the people of the island would have believed at the time. For instance, the black sands caused by lightning dogs from the sky was a real myth about an area of Tsushima. Number 74. Similarly, one of these mythic tales, The Curse of Uchitsune, is one of the only instances in the whole of the base narrative of the game where something supernatural happens, i.e. that demon appears. Number 75. In case you've ever wondered, by the way, it's impossible for your horse to die in combat scenarios. Even if it's hit, it will just leg it, so no Red Dead 2 style guilt for you. Number 76. Ghost also gives you the choice to not only pick what colour your horse is going to be, but also what their name is. You can pick Nobu, Sora or Kage. And just so we're clear, by the way, your choice has absolutely no impact on the game whatsoever. Number 77. There are 10 hidden altars in the game where Jin may honour those who have passed on. You can swipe down on the touchpad to make Jin bow. 
When done correctly, the bow will trigger an effect in the natural environment such as fish jumping up the water, lightning striking the ground, and you get a nice trophy if you do them all. Number 78. We've already mentioned the fact that Jin follows the wind, but he should also follow those yellow birds that his mama used to love too, not just because they pretty, but because they can lead him to places of interest. Now I've checked to see if this has anything to do with the culture of the time, but no, it just seems like just a pretty bird. Number 79. As well as birds, Tsushima has a lot of foxes one can follow to find their shrines, which has a nice form of collectible. These are called the Inari Shrines, and they exist in real life. Used to worship the deity Inari, who was associated with foxes, tributes of food are often left at these shrines and altars. Number 80. In a lovely twist, you can pet the foxes too, something I'll do in this game because they're cute and not real, but in real life, foxes are awful and horrible and you shouldn't pet them and they disturb me because they're as big as dogs and no one knows where they are during the daytime, but anyway. After 10 days of the game's release, 8.8 .8 million foxes have been petted in the game, which is, yeah, nice, isn't it? Number 81. The foxes, birds and wind systems put together will not only to have things to interact with in the world, but also to reduce the need for a HUD. As well as this, it also gave players the feeling that Mother Nature is on Jin's side and is trying to help him in his quest. I mean, a well-timed hurricane would have helped Mama, but hey, take what you can get. Number 82. Also, yes, this game, like many others, as it's seemingly legally mandated now, has a photo mode. It was added late in development. Number 83. Jin's armor and katana will get extremely dirty when fighting. Talk about attention to detail. Top tip here though that I didn't know even though I've platinum the damn game. You can clean his sword by swiping right on the touchpad like women do to me on Tinder. <laughs> Lol, funny joke. Number 84. By the way, Nate Fox has said that when the game was released he explored several streaming sites to watch people play it and hear the stream of consciousness while playing, as well as reading the comments as they came in. I'm just saying, be careful what you say on, you know, Twitch and stuff. Those devs could be watching. Number 85. He's not the only one on streaming sites, by the way. The actor who mo-capped and voiced warrior monk Norio, Earl T. Kim, streamed himself playing in the game and almost burst into tears when he saw himself in the game for the first time. Number 86. There's a trophy you can unlock called the Koopa Clan Cosplayer, which is related to the armor you're wearing. To get it, you need Kozaku's armor, Ocean's Guardian armor die, Sly Tanuki's sword kit, and the Crooked Kama headband. This is all obviously a reference to Sucker Punch's other famous IP, Sly Cooper. Number 87. Speaking of cosplay armor, Ghost of Tsushima's Legends mode. Oh, wait, we haven't actually spoken about that. So, yeah, okay, let's talk about that first. Ghost of Tsushima Legends is a multiplayer mode for the game that was released on October 26, 2020. Number 88. It was released for free. Free, I tell you, free. That's a fact on its own because free DLC is a beautiful thing that should be encouraged. God bless. Number 89. I say it's free, but if you want to play with your pals, some cost is involved in the form of PlayStation Plus, but you can play Legend solo if you fancy not communicating with other human beings for a bit. Number 90. In Legends, there are four, count them four, classes available. Samurai, Hunter, Ronin, or Assassin. Legends is separate from the single player campaign of Ghost of Tsushima, though certain items in Legends are unlocked through progression in Jin's journey. It's a lovely free bonus. Number 91. From a narrative point of view, these are stories told by a chap named Gyozen, who is trying to process the events of the Mongol invasion by retelling the events of what's going on with a supernatural exaggeration, or at least that's what Sucker Punch say. Number 92. Since it's more supernatural, the different classes are able to do things that maybe aren't that realistic. The Assassin class, for instance, can literally become invisible, which as far as I'm aware, is not possible in boring old reality. Number 93. You can also find demon bosses in this that are based on Oni and Yukai demons from Japanese folklore. Buddhists believe that if your soul is irredeemable, once you're dead you'll turn into one of these. So be careful, be redeemable, be best. Number 94. Anyway, back to cosplay. Legends received some special armor sets based on other PlayStation specific IPs for a limited time only. These include outfits inspired by Bloodborne's Hunter, God of War's Kratos, Horizon Zero Dawn's Alloy, Aloy, Alloy, and a big Colossus lad from Shadow of the Colossus. Number 95. There's also the Band of the Second Sun, which is apparently based on the colours of a warrior from a different time and place. That warrior is Deslin Rowe from Infamous Second Sun, and the colour is the same one as his little hat. Number 96. In Jin's house, you can find a table. Number 97. I'm just kidding. The table contains a lot of origami figures referencing other PlayStation exclusives, like Ratchet and Clank and The Last of Us Part 2. I don't have time to go through all of them, but there's a lot. Number 97. It's safe to say the game did very well. Very safe to say. Safe as a safe house in a, a cardigan? I'm tired. After three days of sales, it had sold 2.4 million units, which was the fastest selling debut for original Sony IP. Ba boom. Number 98. Then, after three weeks in Japan, it surpassed Marvel Spider Man as having the highest lifetime sales for a first party PS4 game. It was a hit, baby. 
number 99. So the game was a success commercially, but that's not all. That was cemented in all the hot awards it was nominated for. It may not have won Game of the Year at the Game Awards, that went to The Last of Us Part 2, but it did win the award for Best Art Direction and The Player's Voice, so in many ways it was the people's princess. Number 100... Da, da, da. However, it won Game of the Year at the Famitsu Awards by Famitsu Magazine in Japan, so it's officially award winning, okay, not just nominated, okay, good, good, good. Number 101. This is spoiler free, don't worry, but the game has choices you can make in terms of dialogue, but they don't really affect the plot too much. The ending though is entirely dictated by one choice at the end of the game, so no pressure. So those were 101 facts about Ghost of Tsushima. Now, do you think a sequel is necessary? What other time periods do you want Sucker Punch to have a look at? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, be sure to give this video a like while you're down there, and also subscribe if you haven't done so already, because it's a real party round here. In the meantime though, good lord, to look at these two videos here. Oh my, you're in for such a treat. Such a treat. Give one a click and see what I mean, and I'll see you there. Goodbye.